Thank you very much. No need to sneak, guys. Make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> so you guys are sneaking in. Now, I want to say at the top, because I feel like people feel very like self-conscious about leaving to go to the toilet. Feel free to go. This is just a little set, not a hostage situation. <laughs> All right? Because I, you know, I always say I'm funny, but I'm not like UTI funny. <laughs> I'm one of the best, I believe, I'm one of the best comedians, but I'm not worth getting cystitis for. <laughs> Last kind of review one is that my, he was so good, my vagina was fizzing. That's not what, <laughs> not the message I'm trying to give out here. So Ivy Gardens, you guys good? <laughs> it is a pleasure to be back. I haven't been to Dublin for eight years. Yeah, it's been a while, man. I've been busy. What the fuck do you want from me? I gotta work. <laughs> you know, things have changed though. It's very nice, looking very cosmopolitan out there. I'll be honest, last time I was here, I definitely felt like a Cocoa Pop on a bowl of Rice Krispies. <laughs> That's for sure. It's, uh... But you know, it's been eight years since and I feel like, uh, there's like five Cocoa Pops in that bowl now. So, you know, like a slither of chocolate, you're getting there. So I do a lot of international gigs, man, and you know, you guys are quite welcoming. Sometimes people like give me real funny looks. Like I was in Australia. I'm not sure if you know Australia. It's like the UK in 1976. Because <laughs> they like introduce me and they'd be like, the next guy coming on stage is from the UK. Then I come out and then you hear someone whispering, did I mean Upper Kenya? I'm all... <laughs> I'm sure the Irish know about, you know, my people because you guys were also not allowed to have housing. Just us, you and the dogs. <laughs> if you recall correctly. I, um, I want to give you, I want to tell you guys a secret about the black community. Um, something, uh, we have this thing about Irish people, like, and it, I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you, but I think I should get it off my chest. <laughs> so, obviously, you guys know Jerry Adams, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth, and if any black person tells you otherwise, they are fucking lying. 90% of black people think that Jerry Adams' name is Sinn Féin. <laughs> like, we have conversations like, I tell you something, that Sinn Féin, he don't play, you know? He ain't having none of that shit from those British imperialists. See a white guy with a beard, I'd be like, he's got that Sinn Féin beard. You see that beard right there? Political, that's like the Irish Afro right there. So there you go, Americans in a room. We can be ignorant too sometimes. <laughs> that was a harsh jab, but I can say that. I got a green card, so. Yeah, I'm a resident of the UK and the States. Spend a lot of time over there, do a few gigs. I remember a couple years back, during the Trump administration, I took the courageous step to go to the States and made it back, so that's cool. Uh, <laughs> While I was out there, I was doing some gigs and uh, there was a 14-year-old kid in the audience. I said to him, hey, you should listen to what I have to say. Who knows, you might learn something from these jokes, trying to be a role model. And his reply was, I've got Xbox Live and free porn. What the fuck can you teach me, old man? <laughs> to which I replied, well, if Trump does two terms, you might be sucking dick for fresh water. So, I think you should listen. It was somewhat of a tense exchange. <laughs> I'm not a parent either, as you can tell. <laughs> How many people here don't have kids? You know what, for a country which is a predominant religion of Catholicism, that's very impressive. So shouts out to my pull-out gangsters in the court. <laughs> Never miss. <laughs> Anyway, where was I? Free porn. Yeah. Now, when I was a kid, this sounded like a dream. You know, you dream about having the opportunity to have free porn, but I'm older and wiser now, and I realize, like most of us do, you should have everything in moderation. And the thing about pornography is that one of the most damaging things is that it does, it does kind of distort the image that men have, especially when it comes to teenage girls. We're always sexualizing the image of teenage girls. Like, I always find it really strange. Like, remember in Friends, when Rachel tried to get with Josh? You know Friends? Yeah, yeah. yeah in my community, it's called white people. <laughs> Only because Phoebe was homeless and she doesn't know one black person in fucking New York? <laughs> You've been on a subway, breakdancing, gospel singing. She should know at least one person. 
Anyway, I digress. Yeah. So she dresses up like a cheerleader to like, you know, get the guy. And I'm like, that's fucking weird. Why do people think that you should use a sexualized image of teenage girls to attract men? Because women, you don't do that. Women don't do that with their partners. I doubt any woman's ever turned to her partner and gone, hey baby, I want to do some role play. Can you put on some stained boxer shorts and an old Gaelic football top? And uh, leave a takeaway under your bed for like a week. And then I'm going to saunter upstairs with a basket of dirty clothes and ask you about your exam revision. And then you tell me to fuck off because you're going with your friends to McDonald's. And that will turn me on so much. That's not something women say. And, you know, to the gentlemen out there, I'm not trying to virtue signal. We can't deny how much influence can, you know, how much influence porn has on young men. Because according to a recent study conducted at my Weatherspoons, uh, <laughs> say a lot of young men now aspire to be pizza delivery boys. Some of you know what I'm talking about and some of you are living a lie with your partner. But it's like a real trope scene, real cliche. A guy will show up and he'll be like, here's your pizza, madam. It's got all the toppings you need and it's piping hot, just like you. And then she'll say something real unrealistic like, I didn't bring any money to pay for this pizza and it's crushed this bikini. What do you suppose I should do? That's all right, I also bought a sausage for you to enjoy. Did you say sausage? But I asked for a nine inch. Well then you're in luck, baby. I'm into the classics, what can I say, you know? Call me old fashioned, I like some music with my fucking. Anyway, I don't think this is uh, you know, particularly helpful for young men. And I think if porn isn't going anywhere, then there should be more positive archetypes in these scenes. Like I, for one, would like to see maybe like a porn accountant. Let me set the scene before you judge. Oh, it's tax season. So in the office doing an audit for an entrepreneur. She's a real go-getter, real she-boss. Then he turns to her and says something like, Madam, I've got some bad news. I'm afraid your assets are in the red. You might need some liquidity in your life. The lady replies, oh my God, my assets are in the red. Well, how do you suppose I get back into the black? I don't need to finish that. You can work out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try not to be too graphic. I know some people be, might be a little bit more sensitive. And I don't want to come on here and offend anyone, but I'd be a liar if I didn't come out here and tell you who I really was. So, yes, cats out the bag. Sometimes I watch porn, okay? Doesn't mean that I'm some pervert that doesn't respect women. You know, I find the female form sexy. A lot of time I want to have sex with women. But I know that being with a woman is a privilege and not a right. That's the difference. That's right. I know how consent works. And it's a shame because in comedy, I found out a lot of people don't understand that no means no. Which is fucked up because in English, no is normally the first word that you learn. But you still have guys, mainly on the internet, who say stuff like, I don't give a fuck. If she's dressed like a slut, she's asking for it which has never been an argument because no one's ever been beaten up on the way home from judo. <laughs> the story never goes, Sinead was coming home from kickboxing class. And then, I can prove it even further. Ladies in the room, you guys remember like combat trousers? Remember how popular combat trousers were? Remember getting to any fucking combat because of them? So what you wear doesn't make a difference. And guys are always like, there's a gray area, there's a gray area. There isn't a fucking gray area. If you're not sure, the answer is no. That's how equality works. Just like, let's say you finish the act of sex and someone says, hey, could I stay the night? No means no. That's how equality works. So, you know, say that to say this, you know. It's not as black and white as me being some kind of perv just because I watch a little bit of porn from time to time. There's a spectrum. There's a pervert spectrum. And I'm on the spectrum. 
to give you an idea how that spectrum works, if at the scale of one, you have like virgin, and 10 is like Japanese businessman, <laughs> then I would say I'm like a three. In that, yes, I do watch porn, but I don't leave comments. It's a, it's a line you don't need to cross. I'll be honest, man, it's been harder to enjoy these kind of things, especially because, as I said, the way women are portrayed is very unrealistic. Like, there's a, uh, there used to be this show that used to come on back in the day called Confessions of a Window Cleaner. And the idea is that this dude, like a repairman, goes to a lady's house and then, like, all the fornication would take place. And I thought that was bullshit, because I've seen how women speak to repairmen. <laughs> and it don't work that way, because normally in the scenes, a guy shows up and he's like, hi. I've come to fix the fridge. And a woman would be like, come right on in. I'm wearing nothing but a dressing gown. Let me just pick up this pen. <laughs> that is not how women speak to repair men. Normally goes a lot more like this. Hi, I've come to fix the fridge. Well, you're supposed to be here between 12 and two. It's three o'clock, I've got kids to pick up. I can't stay in my fucking house all day waiting for some stupid repair man. Maybe I should speak to your manager. I'm really sorry, is there anything I can do to make you feel better? Yeah, you can start by licking my pussy, how about that? That way it's empowering. Now I know some of you might be asking, why has he spent seven minutes talking about pornography? Well, because at one point during the pandemic, me, like most creatives, began looking at this app OnlyFans, thinking, is it gonna go this way? <laughs> <coughs> OnlyFans is a crazy thing, and I found out what a crazy story about OnlyFans, and I really you guys, you need you guys to listen to this. So there was this reality star, her name was Stephanie Matter, right? She was on this show, I think, called The Bachelorette, and then she left the show to start her own OnlyFans. And then she began then sending her fans her farts in jars. <laughs> That's right. She was selling her farts in jars to men subscribers. Now, one lady's laughing. I haven't even told you the crazy part yet. In one month, she made a hundred grand. In Ladies, did you hear what the fuck I just said? Some of you have been holding in farts since four o'clock today. <laughs> Trying to impress some man when you've been sitting on a gold man. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Once she found out she could make a hundred grand selling farts in jars, she decides to reinvest back in the company and she buys a whole lot of refried greens and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> True story. True story. And she's trying so hard to make more products, she ends up having a coronary or a fart attack, if you will. <laughs> Puts the whole thing on hold. <laughs> now, I find this to be a hilarious story. Some more conservative people be like, I don't know why you find that so funny, it's fucking vulgar. What if your daughter was on OnlyFans? How would you feel then, Dane? And to be honest, if my daughter's an adult and she is fulfilled in her line of work, professionally and spiritually, I can't tell an adult what to do with their lives. Because I do comedy and my parents weren't proud of this shit. <laughs> so who am I to tell her who to be? Especially because, like I said, I watch adult films, I go to strip clubs. Every woman working in these trades is someone's mother, someone's sister, someone's niece, someone's aunt. So I'd be a real hypocrite if I was to dehumanize my own child. And at the end of the day, OnlyFans only makes money based on the people that subscribe. So at the end of the day, you know, there's men out there who are writing to women being like, can you send me your fart in a jar? <laughs> I'll give you a hundred pounds. Well, let me tell you something, Dublin. That's somebody's son! I'd rather my child fart in jars for money than my child pay to sniff somebody's farts.
Your daughter does porn. Your son goes to porn conventions. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> As I say, I am not a parent myself, so. <laughs> but I feel like I'm ready, but I'm not sure if I've missed a boat to start my own family. And I may have to be adopted by another family. <laughs> which most people call being a stepdad, but to me, it's the same thing. Are there any stepdads in the room right now? No, no, why would it? This one guy? How's it going, sir? You're not going to cry, are you? You're just going to the toilet. All right, cool, yeah. No, I'm not a hostage, am I? No, not at all, never. I don't know what happens in the household, but here you're good. <laughs> here you're good. And as that man leaves, give him a round of applause, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Good guy, stepping up. And that's the thing, I feel like we're told by society that the perfect family consists of a biological mother and father and 2.4 kids. But we all know in real life, that is not how life works. You can't even spell family without dysfunctional being in there. I always feel like family is more about job titles than it is about your blood. It's about people that love you unconditionally. And I say that because if I ever became a stepfather, I would love my stepkids as if they were my own. But we would definitely argue because I do not take shit from kids. <laughs> as you have learned. And that's when things might get tense. Well, let's say I'm coming home from a gig, maybe had a few drinks with a few friends, stumble in a house, step on my kid's iPad. You know, kids love their tech. Now this kid's going crazy. Oh, Dane, you're so stupid. You broke my favorite toy. I'd be like, you were 10 pounds when you were born. You broke my favorite toy. And you sh <coughs> no, um, don't, all right, don't encourage that. Can I, all right. Ladies, I know some of you are looking at me right now, being like, how dare you? Can I just say, I am well aware of Kegel exercises and pelvic floor exercises. I know that vaginal life doesn't end with childbirth. But that child was talking shit and I had to defend myself. <laughs> I'll do my best to bond with my stepkids, you know, play catch, go to the park, play computer games, because gaming is real big for kids. And I say that because I was a gamer in my youth as well. And one of the games I used to love playing is a game called FIFA. You guys know the game FIFA? Yeah. Now all the guys are like, yeah, the women are like, yeah. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> now, FIFA is a fun game, but anyone who plays FIFA regularly knows it can get very emotional. And let's say I'm having a leisurely game of FIFA with my stepson, and he scores a goal. And then tries to make me watch the replay in my own fucking home. Where I pay the mortgage and the bills. Then he starts trash talking. What's wrong, old man? Your fingers seem kind of slow. Maybe you should check them for arthritis. I'm not having it. I'll be like, these fingers are busy pleasuring your mother the way she deserves. Maybe that's why I'm tired. I feel like some of you went with that and some of you were hurt by my comments to my imaginary stepson. If you were hurt by them, you can call imo imaginary social services and tell them how I behave. Now, I don't want you to think with all of these musings that I have forgotten that within human civilization, being a mother is one of the hardest jobs, if not the hardest job. Very hard. And the mother's in? Cool. Uh, miss there with the glasses, blonde hair? Is, that's, yeah? What's your name, miss? Elisa. Elisa? Uh, is this your mum here? No. Sister? I don't... You guys are like, oh, no! Lisa, I want to ask you a question, which I hope is not too probing and forward. Are you aware of, and have you ever been referred to as a MILF? I have. Of course you have, Elise. I can see from here. I'm not blind. The blood in my veins is red too. <laughs> now, if you're not aware, MILF was a term first coined in the film American Pie. Stands for Mum, I'd Like to Fuck. Now, I'm not sure if this is a compliment coming from men, because if you know men, there's very few things they won't fuck. <laughs> If that's why we got glory holes, because men will fuck a lot of things. <laughs> so even though the M in MILF stands for mum, when it comes to men, that can stand for mango, mattress, <laughs> metal, metal sheet. Like, men will put their dicks in anything, basically. And I also feel like when we discuss, like, mothers, we tend to leave out a subcategory, which would be single mothers. 
society tends to look down on single mothers as if they made some kind of mistake all by themselves. Whereas I love myself a single mother or a smilf, as I like to call it. <laughs> oh, you can't be a smilf, man, I'm telling you. Cause she ain't here for no bullshit. She's here to take care of her kids. Cause sometimes, you know, I'll be honest, I've had one night stands and I may have to come up with the excuse to leave. Like, I'd love to stay, baby. But I think I left the contact lens at a bus stop. And those things dry if you don't get back to them in time. So, you know, single mother ain't going for that. She'd be like, I got football practice at 11 o'clock. Get the fuck out my house. And I respect that. She ain't here for no bullshit. So if you're a single man looking for a good, dedicated woman, don't leave out a smilf. Because where, well, where else in the world can you go on a date and go back to someone's house and get good pussy and a Capri Sun under the same roof? That's right. Get some good sex, get some electrolytes. That's what it's about. And if anyone's wondering, my favorite flavor is orange. So, <laughs> well, this has been fun. Um, I didn't get to meet Sinn Féin, but this has been a wonderful time. <laughs> you have a great actor close the show, Ivy Gardens. You've been amazing. I've been Dane Baptiste. Find me online. Stay in touch. Hopefully I'll see you around. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you very much. Dane Baptiste, everybody! Let me ask you guys a question. You ever seen a job getting stolen before?